What's going on, tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia. And we are the co-owners of Glamorina. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes, and welcome to Behind Glam Marina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to fives, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Now, before we dive into today's episode, we want to do a mental health check-in. We do this every single episode just to check in with each other. We want you guys to do the same thing as you listen. So new week, Kia, how are you feeling this week? Where's your mental health? <laughs> um, I am tired. I would have to say I'm tired. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what is making me tired. I feel like it's, you know, it's just life. It's a lot of things on our plates um, as mothers, as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs working nine to five. So um, yeah, I would have to say on this Wednesday, I am tired. <laughs> I'm yeah. tired tonight, but I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I, I can totally relate. I can totally relate. I think for me, I'm I'm exhausted. I think I'm I'm a little beyond tired. Um <laughs> just because I, I am in a transition period in my life. Like so many things are changing. And I, I know yeah. that's a part of my exhaustion. But mm-hmm. so many great things to still be like thankful for, grateful for to keep you yes. just to kind of offset that exhaustion a little bit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I agree. Um, outside of your personal life, just I know within Glimmerina, so many yeah. amazing things happening, doors opening, conversations had. Mm-hmm. And um, so while I, you know, I joke and say that I'm tired, which is real, um, at the same time, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. for the possibilities. So yep. same. Yeah. <laughs> same. That it drives you, it drives you. So I'm I'm super excited for where Glamarina is going. Absolutely. Um, but let's get into today's episode. So in today's mm-hmm. episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission, we want to talk about colorism. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Colorism. <laughs> you know what you know what it is, whether you know it or not, you know what it is. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean? Where did it come from? And have you experienced colorism in your personal life? Yes, definitely. And the reason why we wanted to touch on colorism, it has kind of been like this hot topic lately. It's an ongoing conversation, especially within the Black community. I don't think that's ever stopped. Uh, We've been talking about colorism for centuries. (laughs) However, um, more recently, if you are a Real Housewives of Potomac fan, um, like a lot of our DMV listeners are, um, you know that They've been talking about colorism quite a bit. That is a show, The Real Housewives on Bravo. And in this one, this um, franchise, it's a majority lighter skinned Black women and a couple of brown, darker skinned Black women. And they have brought up the topic of colorism. So we felt like it's only right to discuss colorism, how it happens you know, in our community. And, um, and I think it's important to have kind of these uncomfortable conversations just for all of us to be able to get on the same page to understand each other better and where each other comes from. And just to make sure that we're not, um, you know, we're not, um, we're not engaging in colorism ourselves um, to each other. So that's why it's so important. Um, So Nicole and I found this great article on verywellmind.com about colorism and its definition of colorism is defined as colorism is the practice of favoring light skin over darker skin the preference for lighter skin can be seen within any racial or ethnic background. So that's important to note. Colorism is not just in the Black community. Colorism is in a lot of Black and Brown communities, Asian, Hispanic. There is a preference for lighter skin um, it, rather than or over darker skin. Yeah. Okay. All right. So where does colorism come from? I think many of us have a pretty good idea. Uh, but if you are not familiar where colorism is in this separation of lighter and darker skin, it's rooted in racism. And it really comes from slavery. We all know that while American Black Africans were brought over to America and enslaved, um, there was 
unfortunately, things happening with the master and the slaves and children were born of, uh, you know, a mixed race, white and black. And there were a lot of children being born into slavery that were light skinned. And during those times, there was a preference of or I would say different treatment of light skin and dark skin. Everyone kind of jokes about, you know, the house Negro versus the mm-hmm. field Negro. The house Negroes were predominantly light of lighter hue um, than darker skin. And so I feel like that's where it's rooted. And from there, it's really has trickled down to permeate within our community today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, we all I like how you mentioned the fact that it it exists among ethnicities outside of black people, because I know there was a big thing with like Amara La Negra. You know, we we worked with her like last year or two years ago, but Mm -hmm. how she is an Afro Latina and she's Mm -hmm. outcasted because she's darker. So that was a big thing, too. So we see it in reality TV, which is, um, you know, that's where you see beauty, quote unquote, and mm-hmm. just to kind of think about about that. But yes, it's de- it's deeply rooted in slavery. If you're darker, it's like you're far you're further removed from the white people. You know, if you're lighter, you're you're more closely you know related to them as far as ancestry goes because of you exactly. Know. There's a proximity to whiteness. Exactly. And I know <laughs> Candace Candace said that on a on their uh, reunion for again Housewives of Potomac um, and she talks about you know your proximity to whiteness you're the, the lighter you are the closer to whiteness mm-hmm. that you are um, and you're right I mean it's we see it in reality TV we see it all over in the media you know what I mean um, and it's unfortunate because what's happening with colorism is brown or darker skinned women gets excluded in the conversation and whether it's social media, regular, you know, media, TV, movies, um, there's a, a, a preference for a lighter skin actress or model. Um, sometimes they've had actresses that were supposed to be darker skin. I, I read in the article, um, what is that girl's name? I cannot think of her name right now, but she was playing Nina Simone and they had to make her a little bit browner and she's uh afro latina i believe or latina but they had to make her um change her her skin tone to be a little browner and and there's arguments of like why not just hire a browner or darker skinned woman so when we have and participate in colorism you know again it's um it has negative consequences for browner darker skinned people especially women because they get left out Um, they get excluded from a lot of things yeah, and I mean, outside of reality TV or outside of the entertainment industry, it happens um, in other places. I mean, you see it in your mm-hmm. nine to five life too. Like, yeah. there's there's a lot of opportunities in in the nine to five or the work world, corporate America, where, um, say you you they need a representative to support to represent the company or the business outside of the company the darker skinned people or women may not be included in that because they don't want a darker Mm. skinned face to be the face of that company or that organization. So I've seen it in corporate America. We see it everywhere. We see it in our day to day. So I think it's just important for us to, this was just an important, important episode for us to cover because Mm -hmm. we have to see it. We have to know what it is and we have to acknowledge it in order to try to like shift, shift the narrative and, and make sure we understand other people's perspective. Definitely. And I like that you said that in the workplace, this article had mentioned that, um, it says, you know, um, in terms of colorism, it's detrimental to Black Americans' advancement. Colorism mm-hmm. can be equally crippling if, um, and maybe more so than racism. The preference for lighter skinned Blacks by whites and Blacks can cause darker skinned Blacks to have poorer outcomes in many areas, such as education, income, and income, than their fairer counterparts. It can even affect health and marital status. So, yes, it is definitely prevalent. Um, and I thought, I thought this article was really interesting. There's some stuff I've already knew, right? The paper bag test that would happen, you know, um, years ago, the paper bag test was used to determine if someone was allowed to enter churches, nightclubs, and fraternities. So if someone was darker than the color of a brown paper bag, mm-hmm. they were excluded. And something so that i have heard before i had never heard of the blue vein society have you ever heard i I had actually never heard of either to be Mm. honest which you know i'm not sure how many people have or haven't so if Mm -hmm. you're watching this like on youtube or something drop a comment let us know i had never heard of either but the blue vein thing it made me look down in my hands like (laughs) (laughs) i can see my blue veins i mean i feel like i'm not I'm not the darkest, but I'm not the lightest either. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I just kind of looked down when I read that part of the article, like, hmm, I guess I would have passed, you know, the test. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had never, I wasn't familiar. Yes, the Blue Vein Society. So again, um, it, and this article doesn't particularly say what year this was in, um, but the, the Blue Vein Societies, it said right after slavery, um, there was a preference for light skin that continued within Black community. And the lighter skin Black people formed clubs. And basically, so it's not a brown paper bag. It's if your veins showed through your skin, your blue veins showed through your skin, you could enter into, they, they were basically these little societies that um, lighter skin Black people. So again, colorism doesn't just happen where white people have a preference for lighter skin. Obviously, Black people have a preference for lighter skin and lighter skin people joined up together right after slavery and created communities and organizations that only that they could uh, be participate in. And again, it left browner and darker skin women and men outside of these clubs. And it's just unfortunate that I hate that colorism exists within our community because it just separates us. Mm -hmm. It's like another opportunity to separate and dominate the black community, whatever the, I feel like, you know, the, the man, the society, whatever can do to, you know, break black people apart yeah. because we're stronger together. But if there are these constant things that are constantly separating us and you're over here and you're over here and those that are over here are higher up because you might be lighter skin, you have the straighter hair, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, again, it's, it's a mat. It's that's imaginary. We really yeah. are one sisterhood, one tribe. However, it's, it is so big that, you know, again, the black community, we, we, we reinforce some of yeah. these ideas about colors. We just do. And before you start, I, I just have to say, I have an aunt, <laughs> I have a family member that like when I was younger, and I know this happens a lot within families, I have a family member that she would point out like her children were lighter skin or lighter skin. She would point out sometimes of like, gosh, you know, like you guys looking kind of dark today or you've been in the sun too much. <laughs> so that really comes it. I feel like it's passed down yeah. generation to generation sometimes right with, within our own families. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think um, it's unfortunate that, and, and I want to, I don't know if the article said this, I don't remember seeing that part, but like how this society actually started. I know it was, you know, light, light skinned black people. So black people were congregating, but part of me feels like the white man probably st- provoke this you know what i mean in a sense to start that because now look at the damage that's done just thinking about the history of these societies separating and agreeing to separate you know Mm -hmm. maybe the lighter skinned people probably thought they were better because it's a society an exclusive society so it's just unfortunate that we kind of contributed to that early on because look at us now like we're finally getting to a place where we can try to band together just because of all the detrimental things that's been happening to our people but it's just unfortunate to know that uh we contributed to Mm -hmm. to the the separation you know as a people that's 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 the unfortunate part Mm -hmm. yeah you're right you would you would hope that okay after slavery it's like okay finally our people are free that we would be uh, creating separate, you know, separatism like we would be creating these separate societies where we're better and I think you know, the lighter skinned black people were treated better right. in slavery while while we were enslaved. Mm-hmm. So because they were treated better, and then I guess after slavery, of course, it's not like everyone just walked out like, yeah, we're free. <laughs> so so many things happen, obviously, after that. But right. that preferential treatment for the lighter skin just continued. And imagine, I mean, slavery, what is this, the 1600s? I mean, it is 2023. And there's still you still see the lighter skin i know Mm -hmm. i'm you know almost 40 so me growing up watching music videos the rap videos i used to think that as a kid all the time like i only used to see lighter skin girls when i see and this was you know 20 years ago and still today when i watch commercials when i when i see things in the media movies even you know black uh relationships the couples it's like, it's always like this dark skinned man and this real light skinned woman. Like in TV shows, they were placing a, what's that show? Family Matters. Um, oh, even, Fresh Prince. Uh, my wife and kids. Oh, I thought you were Fresh saying. Prince. My wife yes. and kids too. Fresh Prince. My wife and kids too. They changed out. Even though the girls, both of those girls said, I think the, the browner skinned girl said she had some other opportunities or something. I don't but still, think, look who, I don't look who the replacement was. <laughs> 
Oh, you could have you, you could have got another dark skin girl <laughs> if that was the case. Another dark skin girl for representation is so important for our black and brown, light skin, medium skin, and dark skin, yeah, black girls to see all of us. Yeah, even I would say Aunt Viv on. Um, I love both Aunt Vivs on Fresh Prince, but yeah. just the fact that the f- original was a very dark skin woman, beautiful woman. I just feel mm-hmm. like the replacement should have been dark skin as well. But yeah. I will acknowledge like. Things are changing. I will acknowledge yeah. that the the reboot, Bel Air, I love it. Aunt Viv is yeah. bomb. She is dark skinned. She is beautiful. Yes. Like I, I absolutely love her. She's so graceful. So mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of, and that's why it's important for us to have things of our own black production mm-hmm. companies and mm-hmm. writers and things like that, because there are a lot of people pushing for, um, you know, change and, and mm-hmm. you know, Hillary is is dark skin on the new Bel- on the Bel Air, you know, and I and she was light skin and mm. you know the the opposite back in the day. So I think there are just a lot of you know there is a gradual shift I'll say in, in trying to acknowledge yeah. and, and change the narrative when it comes to you know how we how we look at skin tones. I, I agree, and I I love that. I feel like with the natural hair movement and a lot of black women out here trying to still push, you know, the natural hair still isn't, um, you know, like a, a mixed hair. I mean, I hate, again, we have categories for a four C, but at the same time, I still like that, you know, darker skin, browner skin, women four C the kinkiest hair are really trying to push and break barriers and say, no, like we are here. I feel like there there's a lot of women out here now that are just like, you know what, we're tired of waiting yeah. for the media or big business or whatever. Like we're going to showcase ourselves. I saw a hair company that it's like, it's called for four C only for that kinkier hair. And they, you know, their models and stuff that they show are all dark skin um, or browner skin or have the, so I just think I, I love that we're in a time. I think that a lot of people, People are creating their own businesses and brands and social social media can be good and bad. The good part of it is that you can see more images of brown or darker skinned women if you want to. You know, yeah. I mean, that can come into your feed that you can follow and get inspiration and see people that look like you if you seek that out. Because we, yeah. can't, we can't wait for companies to represent us. Yeah, you, you can't. I mean, there's so much to talk about when it comes to colorism, yeah. but... I just like I love like I know I'm I'm not a uh, super dark, but I've always rooted for because when you think about it, we're all black, right? Our family members, the mm-hmm. skin tones range. So mm-hmm. you you see treatment that you might get versus somebody else, and it's not okay. Mm-hmm. But I just yeah. I really like seeing like I love Kelly Rowland. I love I was gonna say a lot of times in the entertainment industry, not to like super get off topic, but sometimes they might style the lighter skin girl better. Her makeup may look better. Her clothes may look better. And yeah. you can just see the difference. Like you, you might see a girl group and you're like, well, why does she look better than, you know, why is her hair more on point than this one? And it's just <laughs> like, they didn't really care. But I love like women like Kelly Rowland where she comes with these super fire looks. And she just is a, a great representation of like my hair is on point too. My make, you know, like I, I just, uh-huh. I hate when stylists do that. I know it had to be intentional back in the day. Like uh-huh. I, I just know it. Like the girl yeah. groups, like 3LW, there was a big thing with the girl Notori yeah. and how they didn't uh-huh. want her in the group because she was dark skinned, but she had the best voice. Just things yes. like that is, is just crazy uh-huh. to me. And I remember when they came out and I was like, oh my gosh, like I love, there's a black, a dark skinned girl. Cause mind you, see, I, again, my perspective is I, from a community of predominantly white and so mm-hmm. imagine i mean as a dark i'm brown skin um as a dark and i have had dark skin uh other girls that i, I grew up with and we had conversations about how difficult it was you know being at school like living in a town like this um not seeing yourself represented but yes yeah, so a 3lw came out and there was a dark skin girl mixed in there i felt like it was like this perfect trio mm-hmm. because you had latina you had like a brown skin then you had a darker skin mm-hmm. and i just love that i think it was so great for my you know the girls at my time because again mm-hmm. like you just you just don't see that as much and you're right i mean you think about the beyonce's now i don't know sierra i feel like it's more brown but mm-hmm. sometimes people do wonder you know if some of these singers actresses if they would have gotten as far as they did if, if they were darker skin. So that's, you know, right. that's another argument for <laughs> another day. But no, um, like you said, it's a lot to, you can unpack and this conversation can go in so many different areas in terms of colorism. I do want to touch base on, have you ever felt like, 
I consider between you and I, Nicole, you being of a lighter hue, have you ever experienced colorism or, you know, witnessed someone being treated differently based off of the color of their skin or their hue? Yeah, and just looking at, I mean, for people who actually watch this, I feel like looking at the screens, we look very similar yeah. in color. <laughs> but I feel like in a lot of the, this happens a lot. As you get older, your skin, you get darker. Um, mm -hmm. So as a kid, I was very, very light and red, considered red. Like my my dad is half Irish, so he has white in his blood, which explains my lighter skin. Um, but I was, um, I would just say real quick, my aunt always outcasted me because I was one of the few, probably the only light-skinned kid in my family. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it, she would always say that little red bone girl, where you come from little red bone girl. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that was, was pretty like the bad side or the downside of me experiencing a certain level of colorism within my family, mm -hmm. but outside the outside world, I've, I feel like I've always been treated better. You know, I have to acknowledge yeah. that, you know, when yeah, I, in my modeling privilege. days, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my hair texture adds to it sometimes, you know, I have a, a curlier texture hair, um, or a less forcey hair, if you will. Mm -hmm. So modeling industry days, yes, I've I've seen they put me in the front of the music video or they put me in the better clothes on the runway or mm -hmm. in seeing the darker skinned girls sitting back waiting for their looks. Nobody's trying to give them a look for the runway because yeah. probably because they're dark skinned. So I've definitely witnessed it from like my modeling days or mm -hmm. the the nine mm -hmm. to five world, corporate America. Totally. I've I've totally experienced that, but more so seeing me get, be given treatment that other people aren't being given and and realizing that they're darker skin. Yeah. And I really, I appreciate the transparency of, and you, you know, acknowledging that light skin privilege is very similar to, again, on the housewives of Potomac, Ashley mentioned, you know, um, in their conversation of colorism, um, Ashley mentioned, yes, I can acknowledge there's light skin privilege. I can acknowledge mm -hmm. that I've been treated differently and often better. And that's why it's, again, it's important. Whereas you have some of the other cast members sitting there of a lighter hue acting like they don't know what colorism is and what y'all talking yeah. about. And let's get this over. Yeah. Like you know? how, and, and one last thing though, about that too, another area that I've experienced that you may have seen this too, our men do that to us. So if you're going to the club, and you're trying to get in, you know, the, the certain girls, certain girls can get in for free or get in the front of the line. And I've experienced that so much in the nightlife scene, especially in D.C. Mm. Um, so just just acknowledging that the black men do that to us, too. Yes, they do. And it's so funny because there is a part in this article. Again, this article is called What is Colorism? I believe that's what the article is called. It's off of VeryWellMind.com. But it does mention um, in terms of men dating, black men dating um, it does say, well, basically how to combat colorism and why it's important for us to have these uncomfortable and honest conversations so that we have some self-reflection and change. Um, and it does say for those men who rarely date darker skinned women, perhaps they might reflectively, reflexively consider how colorism affects their dating preferences. Mm -hmm. Um, lighter skinned people must be cognizant of their social privilege and consider how to use it to remedy some of the harm against dark skinned individuals. That's why it's important. Mm -hmm. It's not just great to say, oh, you know, like, yes, I, I acknowledge that um, I have um, some advantages because I'm light skinned, but is there a way at times where maybe you see the disadvantages, can you use that at all? Now, obviously, you know, like you're modeling and stuff, you're not gonna go up to a director and be like, well, I'm not doing this unless you add her. But yeah. some people, uh, some actresses have said, you know what, if you have a platform and you're able to say like the actress um, who was going to play Nina Simone. Now, I, I understand money is money. It's like, I don't want to turn down a role. Perhaps she could have said, though, I think that this role should go to a darker skinned woman. It's going to yeah. have to take some bold changes. And it sometimes does have to come from those who are get, who have the privileges to open I agree. that doorway. I agree. And I've done that in the corporate world where you clearly you clearly know mm -hmm. that, it, that it's a colorism thing. So I may have been assigned to do something or given this big responsibility to do something. Um, and I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense from speaking up. Really. I have spoken up multiple times. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to do it because I have X, Y, Z already on my plate. I think you should let so-and-so do it. I got, uh, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, Oh, you think she can do it? Yeah. I think she can do it. I've, I've seen her work. Yeah. So yeah. certain things like that is like, give her the opportunity to, exactly. to, to grow and develop in the corporate space. 
you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's definitely good to acknowledge it and also do something when you can to try to yes. combat do it. Do something when you can. That's the takeaway here um, for all of us, but especially for those that have the privilege. Try, if you can, if you see someone, a browner, darker skinned person, not, you know, being treated unfairly, whether it's at work or what have you, if you're able to step up and to say something to make a difference, that's the most important part. Because ultimately, again, like I said in the beginning, we are one sister. Right. We are one. It is society. It's the makeup industry. It's it's a lot that wants to tear us apart. Right. And black women need each other, regardless if you're light skin or if you're dark skin. Like we need each other. Right. And we internally have to also work on and try to stop, you know, putting people in hierarchies. You know, I know growing up, growing up when I was younger, I wanted to be white <laughs> just because of where I live. So obviously from wanting to be white, I did envy lighter skin. And I know it lo- it appears that you and I are the same complexion, but um, as well, I consider myself a brown skin girl and as a brown skin girl, and I would see the, the light skin girls or the biracial girls here where I grew up as a kid and the boys would treat them better or like them. And I mean, I have had a boy tell me he wouldn't date my best friend because she was too dark and he didn't want his kids to be dark. And that's a oh, real wow. life thing. A black, a black boy? A black boy, he's light skin. He's currently married to a white woman. Mm-hmm. He did not want, again, this is years and years ago, but still um, it hurts. It's hard. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough situation when you don't see yourself represented when you don't, when you feel like, you know, I mean, look at athletes. I have this conversation with my fiance all the time. I mean, athletes, it's almost like they'll divorce their wives or whatever. And then they go for it. If it's not white, they'll go for a real, real light mm-hmm. skin. Uh, I think about like Kevin Hart, not an athlete, but an actor. Comedian. Right. Not to say that there's nothing wrong and men, that men with money naturally fall in love right with these people. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting that yes, men with money. And again, that's why colorism could take so many different forms and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll have to come back to this conversation. But yeah, I mean, men with money, it's almost like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dump the darker skin as if black, darker, brown skin women don't deserve luxury yeah. and um, nice things and softness. And it's like, yeah. no, that's just going to go to the light skin. And, and, and I was going to say too, like, like, again, there's so many things we could touch on, but in regards to that, you know how dark skinned women always, they say black women in, in general, but darker skin women, usually they're bitter, they're mad. And so they think the lighter or mixed race woman is softer. She's more feminine. So I think that plays yes. a part into it too. Like, Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a dark skin. You're hard. You're yeah. You're going to give me a harder time. You know what I mean? So that's yes. another factor. Exactly. That's why I liked how the article said. You know, if men who uh, primarily date light skin, maybe they could take some self reflection. Where mm-hmm. does that come from? Like, as a black man, if you were outright saying, "I will never date dark skin," why? You know, mm-hmm. where is that coming from? What What's the fear about having browner skin kids? Um, and it's colorism is so ingrained within the black community you know while it is within other communities within us because like you said we we just have these stereotypes where you see a darker skinned woman like you mentioned and it's like oh she's tough she's hard she's strong she's mm-hmm. ah, she's like Aunt Jemima you know <laughs> After American studies classes, there was like two types. There's a Jezebel, the over-sexualized black woman. And then there's a, there's uh the mammy, the fat, dark mm-hmm. skin, asexual. She's not, you know, sexual. Yep. Whatever. So I feel like we, we still kind of see that we're still playing on these same stereotypes. And it is just so important as black people to combat that as yep. much as we can. Um, before we end, I did want to touch on, you said about the club and that's just so funny. They said that because I was going to use that example I used to work at a club in DC. I just did the guest list for party promoters, extra money. I was in college. I did the guest list. The bouncers at the club had allowed any lighter skin woman to come in for free. So at this, at this point in the evening, like it wasn't a line, but I have seen where the lighter skin and green eyes, whatever they can skip the line, but they were straight up letting these light skin women come in for free. And whenever there was a brown skin, darker woman, they charged them full price for $20. And so talking about standing up and stuff in that moment, I didn't, you know, and I, I kind of wish I would have said something like that doesn't seem fair or like y'all just let this, these other mm-hmm. women in. It was just so, it hurt my feelings for those women. Um, yeah. It's, it's the know. culture. And I'm sure it's not just in DC. I'm sure it's a lot of cities 
It's yeah. the culture. And again, the these are black men at the door most of the time. Sometimes yeah. you might have an Arabic club owner, but they're not really the ones at the door most of the time. Uh -huh. It's sure. our black men deciding who's the baddest, who's the finest, and who can get in first or yep. for free. And, and usually it's the lighter skinned women. And, and yeah. I know people, we're not the only people who, who've seen that. Yes, we're not the only ones who've seen it. I know that people have experienced it. And again, I think ultimately the biggest takeaway is we can acknowledge that colorism exists. We can mm -hmm. acknowledge that there's some privileges to be light skin. We also need to just stay focused on that we are one tribe and one sisterhood and that we need each other. No one is better than the other. And if you see someone getting treated differently, because it, as a black woman, if you see your darker skin, you know, counterparts getting treated differently. If they're, if you have opportunity to stand up, to say something, to make a difference, please do so. Yes, definitely. Um, even if it's something where you, it's a restaurant and you saw something happen, you can always leave a review, anything that True. you can do. You know what I mean? Exactly. Smallest thing can make a change. So that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, love that takeaway. Love this episode so yes. much. Um, mm -hmm. So excited to to have this one. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Definitely. I also equally love this conversation. I hope to, to revisit it again. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, be sure to visit Glamarina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Until then, stay well, tribe. Yeah,